After Probasco, a guy named uh, Finley Nicholson, and Marianne knows about that, she's a Nicholson, uh, bought the store. Uh, actually, he bought just the merchandise. You can see right here, he only owned the merchandise. He was a renter again. He was renting it from Probasco's heirs. And he ran the store for 17 years. He had a hard time getting people to partnership with. Uh, that I know. We won't go through the whole thing, but uh, the store had been empty since 1873. Finley Nicholson and his cousin Robert Chess, they had an agreement to operate out of the store with their own merchandise. Uh, and this is their first ad. It was called the Nicholson and Chess, uh, well, it just says Nicholson and Chess, but it was a dry goods store. And then here is one of their ads, Nicholson and Chess, new goods, low prices, a little lower key than uh, Probasco's ads were probably. This is a picture of the store when it was Nicholson and Chess. You might not be able to see it, but over here on the right, there's a sign that says Nicholson and Chess, and they sold salt, and another little sign over here says clover seed. Somebody's bringing in uh, lumber uh, to the store, and this was kind of a lumber storage area. You can see some of it over here, and they had barrels over here too. But the main part of the building is right here that we know today, and you can see the upstairs part and the porch out here in front, and over here is the older part on lot two. This is a neat picture. I really like this. This was, I think, from, let's see what that says, 18, 1880. Uh, Robert Chess was a cousin of uh, Finley Nicholson, and their partnership lasted for four years until 1882 when Chess left for Kansas to join his brother, brothers. Finley is looking for another partner, or he's on his own. Uh, he operated it for seven years by himself before he found another partner. And he did find one in 1889. He entered into a partnership with Andrew Klein. Remember Andrew Klein? Well, he was off doing some other things here in town, actually. I think he worked at another store. These people were all related. I mean, they had wives that had different names, you know, because they were married and their maiden name. Anyway, I think Nicholson was working for one of his in-laws or something. Um, I, I forget all the details. I haven't been my detail stuff. But for tonight, I, I don't quite recall, except that this is a whole bunch of relationships. That's what made this store go through all of these years. So here is one of their ads, Nicholson and Klein. New goods, new firm. We're here to stay. Well, they stayed for a year. And then he entered in another, into another partnership with Charles Artley called Nicholson and Artley. And that is one of their ads right there. I don't know. If Pinky was here, he could answer this question probably. Newspaper uh, editors rarely misspelled words. This says grossities. And I know the T is right next to the R on the typewriter. I don't know if that was misspelled or if that's what they called them back in those days. But it's, you can see down at the bottom, that's Nicholson and Artley's ad. Then um, in 1891, the Artley partnership ended. So they were in business for a year together. And Nicholson operated the store for another four years by himself. You can see from the ads, and there were very few ads in the paper, too. That was the other thing. I had to look hard to find just the few ads that I found right here. But uh, Nicholson didn't have very many ads. He was more of a laid-back guy, a real nice guy, well-respected in the community. He donated a lot of money to churches and to schools and other public projects that they had going on in the area. Uh, but he was quiet about it. He was big, big in the Methodist Episcopal Church here in town. So he was well liked, and I have his obituary, and it's a real nice obituary. He's buried, Finley Nicholson is buried out here in Oak Ridge Cemetery. That's the end of the Nicholson years, 1878 to 1895. If you have any questions, thank you.